Hello, everybody. Welcome to the Energy News Beat Daily Stand Up. My name is Stu Turley, President and CEO of the Sandstone Group. I'll tell you what, we are having way too much fun on the news desk here. Let's start off with our stories. Kamala Harris. No question, I would ban fracking. Wow. Shock. Here we go with the next one coming around the corner. We have Iran's tankers double down on concealment efforts post sanctions. Let's go to the next one. U.S. commands higher prices for crude amid growing global oil market influence. Wake up call. New York state likely to miss deadlines on costly, cumbersome climate act. Imagine that. UK mandates green jet fuel by 2025. Holy smokes. And then here we have Polish LNG terminal receives the 300th cargo. That is just outstandingly cool. Well done. Let's start with our first video here. And Miss Producer, if you could bring this up, we're going to play this one little video here, if you don't mind, as we go through this. So, yeah, and, 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 starting, and starting with what we can do on day one around public lands, right? And, um, and then there has to be legislation. But yes, and this is something I've taken on in California. I have a history of working on this issue. And to your point, um, and, you know, the, we have to just acknowledge that the residual impact of fracking is enormous in terms of the impact on the health and safety of communities. Yeah. So thank you, Ms. Producer, for uh, bringing that video up. This is an amazing statement when you sit back and consider she was also says she was heavily involved in California. California has some of the highest energy prices in the world. Her banning of frack has actually caused more harm to the environment than by drilling locally because they are destroying the rainforest. They import 70% of the oil that China produces out out of the rainforest so energy hypocrisy abounds and be careful when you vote because this will also impact the united states and drive energy prices up like you wouldn't believe so let's go to the next story here iran's tankers double down on concealment efforts post sanctions. This is an outstanding story from Lloyd's List. They tracked 11 tankers sanctioned by the U.S. for Iran links between January and March and found that most of them dis disappeared, manipulating their lo locations. And in the words of Irina Slav, sanctions don't work as intended. This is pretty important. You'd sit back and take a look. This one was even like the Don 2 was trading in the Black Sea. The Lady Sophia was in loitering in the Yellow and East China Sea. The Malay was in taking and around Taiwan and stopped transmitting. And the two tankers that just had the fire were also Russian in origin and, and doing Russian crude transfers as well. Moon Bay is falsely flying the flag of Guyana. And when you sit back, this is an outstanding job. Sanctions can effectively immobilize vessels by restricting their access to ports, insurance, and international shipping services. This can make it difficult for sanctions to operate rate, therefore reducing their participation in global trade. Not when it's not being purchased in or bought and sold in the oil in the outside the petrodollar. So again, hats off. This is well worth your time to go through and read this and hats off again to Lloyd's List for putting this together. Let's go to the U.S. commands higher price for crude amid growing oil market influence. The discount of WTI crude to the international benchmark of Brent has dropped from nearly $20 per barrel in the early 2010s to below $3 a barrel today. It increased domestic, domestic offtake capacity, therefore better pipeline connections to Texas and Louisiana make WTI a more influential benchmark in oil markets. This is huge. When you sit back 
and take a look at, let's see, $20 to $30 difference. That is unbelievable. U.S. crude exports have surged around 400,000 barrels per day, nearly all to Canada back in 2015 to more than 4 million barrels this year with the customer base expanding in Europe and Asia. This is pretty darn cool. WTI Midland was added to the Brent basket in 2023 and has been a major driver in surging U.S. crude exports over the past year, especially to Europe. It, it's amazing the difference that our great oil and gas operators have done. It also means a lower prices for U.S. consumers and higher prices for European consumers. So hats off to uh, all of our great oil and gas workers out there. Let's go to the next story here. Wake up call. New York State likely to miss deadlines on costly, cumbersome climate act. Now, New York is on track to miss the majority of its looming climate targets, according to a report from the Democrat New York Governor Kathy Hochul's office. Hochul issued a review earlier this month admitting that she was not going to meet 70% renewable electricity by 2030 due to the rising electricity cost and canceled clean energy projects. As of 2023, four years after the passage and just seven years from the 2020, the 2030 deadline, less than 30% of New York's electricity came from renewable sources. They shot themselves, they pulled a Dick Cheney and shot themselves in the foot and the splatter caught the consumers when they shut down their nuclear plant. They should have kept that thing open and they would be net zero for a certain percentage, whatever that was providing. So New York, you're having some really bad energy policies. Kamala Harris, you've had bad energy policies and everybody needs to understand you are what you vote for. And when you vote for bad energy policies, you pay for it. UK mandates green jet fuel by 2025. David Blackman, Irina Slav, and Tammy Nemeth and I have been talking about the UK and the left leaning left wing government that has now been put in is the UK government has announced the introduction of sustainable aviation fuel SAF mandate set to begin on January 21st, 2025, pending parliamentary approval. The percentage will increase to 10% by 2030 and 2020 and 22% by 2040, meaning this level until further supply uh, certainty is achieved. Here's where this is a huge mistake. Jet engines are not like car engines. And by the way, ethanol is one of the biggest mistakes that the U.S. government has ever done. It takes more energy to create sustainable or green jet fuel than it does to actually burn aviation fuel. So this is absolutely nuts. They say in the article, it's expected to deliver emission reductions of up to 27 MTCO2E by 2030 and up to 6.3 MTCO2E by 2040. I disagree because that's not taking into consideration the actual methane and other emissions that it takes in order to make it. So this is a hundred percent play to their base in their electoral base that this is a brand new thing they're trying to do. And all it does is waste energy, cost people, it will be harder on the engines, and that does not work. So can you see a th energy thread to our stories today? Polish LNG terminal receives the 300th cargo. Poland's Orland received 300th cargo of LNG at the Switching Joyce uh, Terminal since the start of October operations in 2016. This is exciting when you take a look at the, the growth was possible due to the expansions of the gas systems facility where PK Olin booked a regasification capacity of 6.2 BCM per year since 2022. This is exciting. If you are in the oil and gas trading space and you're needing tankers in a crude jet fuel, 
or you're needing LNG transport, go to energynewsbeat.co forward slash trading desk. Reach out to us. We'll hook you up with the right folks. And again, thanks. And really take your time out there. Keep your head on a swivel. And at least you know where I stand when I'm walking out the street and who I'm supporting. Have an absolute wonderful day out there, and we will see you guys next time on the Energy Newsbeat Daily Stand-Up. Have a great day.